My name is Keith Johnson. I'm the Purdue University Forage Extension Specialist located in the state of Indiana. And like many disciplines, there are tools that uh, one can use to help you uh, make decisions. And one of those in the pasture uh, uh, industry is that of the grazing stick, of which I am holding here. And uh, we're going to go through uh, how to utilize such a tool for the purpose of estimating the yield of forage dry matter that might uh, be out in a pasture field. Upon uh, casual observation, this looks very simply to be a yardstick, but as one evaluates and looks at the different sides of this, you see a lot of different information that uh, is provided on the grazing stick. And so the purpose of today is to kind of help one begin the understanding of how the stick works and uh, to take you to a location where the actual written down how to use the stick is given. One of the first things that we do need to do is to identify the particular forage because the amount of dry matter per acre inch is going to be different for tall fescue as compared to alfalfa for instance. So I'm here today in a pretty much pure tall fescue field and so we've identified the forage. The next step is to get an idea of how tall the height of the uh, forage actually is in the field and so of course we would put this in vertical position, take it down to the ground level and would measure the height of the forage and there is one caution that I would give is one would not take the tallest leaf blade and hold it up and say that this stand is 15 inches tall, but rather you would go down to about a height where there is more consistent uh, growth occurring. And so today if I were looking at this, I would say that there's about 9 inches from the soil surface uh, to uh, where the most of vegetation is going to be found to be about a nine inch zone. Now as one looks at this grazing stick, um, we really don't have nine inches of grazable forage. We're going to have a lesser amount than that because in a rotational pasture uh, we would like to stop grazing when we're at, at about four inches. So on this stick there's a little rectangle here and that's a zone of stopping grazing and for the purposes of today we'll say that we're going to stop grazing when the average uh, height uh, that the crop has been removed to by grazing is four inches. So in the example we started out with nine inches. We're going to leave four. So we had five inches of grazable forage. Now on this grazing stick we have a spot that's called forage. Okay, and as we flip the stick, we see that we have many, many different types of forages that are listed there under that column. And the other thing that we need to do as we evaluate what the forage actually is, is how much of the soil is covered by the forage that's out in the pasture. So in this example, we have less than 75% cover, 75 to 90% cover, or greater than 90 percent uh, cover. Where we're at today I would probably estimate that we're probably somewhat less than 90 percent cover. There is a little bit of soil that is showing. If we look into the stand here from above you can see that there is some soil and probably we're somewhere around 85 percent uh, cover. So we're about 85 percent of the sunlight's being harvested by the plant through photosynthesis. So if we find the tall fescue line, take us over to that column that was 75 to 90 percent cover. It's telling us that we have somewhere between 250 and 350 pounds of dry matter per acre inch. Now recall that we had grazable forage of five inches. So an estimate of yield in this particular area that received no nitrogen fertilizer at all 
we have approximately 300 pounds per acre inch times five inches of grazable forage or 1,500 pounds of dry matter uh, per, per acre. So that's an estimate of the yield. The other thing that's pretty powerful about uh, this particular stick is that down on one of these sides we have a couple of algebraic equations. And as one works through uh, training their eye in terms of how many animals might be on a particular paddock or the number of days of grazing, we can put the characteristics of your pasture and the livestock being fed on that pasture and we can calculate the animal number or the number of days of grazing that uh, might be out there uh, in that particular pasture. So such things as the total dry matter per acre, of which we just calculated, the size of the acreage of uh, the paddock that they're grazing, the harvest efficiency, and that is a number again going back to this stick that has lots of information on it. We find the header harvest efficiency. And so again we rotate the stick and with continuous grazing we're only 25 percent efficient. A six pack system is estimated to be 45 percent efficient and as we increase paddock number the percent efficiency increases. So that's one of the good advantages of splitting your continuously grazed pasture into many paddocks is we're getting a greater amount of harvest efficiency. So that's a number that we have to put into this equation as well. So that's the numerator. The denominator is what is the weight uh, of the animals uh, out on the pasture. In other words, if we had 20, 20 cows that weighed 1,200 pounds each, uh, that would be uh, 24,000 pounds of animal weight times the intake rate in percent body weight. And I would guesstimate on this type of forage composition, we might be getting a, an intake of two and a half percent of the body uh, weight per day. And then uh, the number of days of grazing that uh, we might expect from this, and that will calculate uh, the number of animals that uh, we can run on a particular, particular pasture. Or we can manipulate that equation and we can find the number of days of grazing and again with the same information, the productivity, the number of acres, the harvest efficiency, the animal weight and the animal number and the intake rate and percent body weight, we can figure out whether there might be three days of grazing or whether we might have 20 days of grazing. So going through this helps train uh, ourselves such that as working through a season or two with the use of this grazing stick, we've trained our eye. And frankly, after that point, we might not know any longer take this grazing stick to a pasture. It strictly may become a yard stick. But it is a very useful tool for those that uh, are beginning to get into uh, rotational grazing. And even for individuals that have been experienced uh, livestock producers uh, that are learning the advantages of rotational grazing, it's a device that can be used to train your eye in an effective manner.